Would being cheap make you rich or even save you a lot of money? Well, first, how do you say that you're being cheap? Being cheap means you spend less money when you buy, even to the point that you sacrifice the quality of an item. You focus solely on price since your main goal is not to spend money in the first place instead of trying to look for value in what you're buying. Here's why you won't get rich by doing that. You think you're saving more money in the process but in reality, you're not since you're constantly replacing it because it easily breaks. Have you ever experienced that? You bought a cheap product thinking you save a lot then after you use it, it's actually disposable. It's a one-time use. Then you realize if you just bought the more expensive one, you would have saved more. I experienced this back when I was in high school. I buy the cheapest leather shoes, then I constantly replace them every single month. The compounding cost of that constant buying would have enabled me to buy two good branded leather shoes. Because our goal back then was to avoid spending money instead of looking for good quality products. What cheap people have is a scarcity mindset. They feel that they will never have enough money, so they don't buy things or do things because they feel they don't have enough. So stop doing that and don't even think about saving in that way. Instead, what you should be doing is be frugal. You might ask me, isn't that the same thing? The answer is a big no. Frugal people spend intentionally and carefully. They have self-control when it comes to making purchases. They don't buy on impulse, especially nowadays in a world where you can shop with one click. They know that every cent has a purpose and that purpose was well thought out and planned out. They generally like to stick to the plan to reach their goal. So learning how to be frugal is one of the best things you can do for your finances. It doesn't have to be difficult, it is actually easy once you get the hang of it. So here are 5 ways to develop a frugal mentality. First, determine your wants and needs for your spending habits. Define your needs and wants. For example, you need to replace your old smartphone. A brand new smartphone is a need, the latest iPhone model is a want, and buying a low quality phone is being cheap. Separating your needs and wants is a crucial step in how to live frugally. You have to pay attention to where your money goes or why. You should focus on value for money. There is a reason behind spending less on those things that has less value and spending more on the things that have great value. When frugal people do have to spend on something that wasn't in the plan, they do their research to look for the best way to use their money efficiently. For example, if a frugal person needs to buy a laptop, one might think that he would choose the most inexpensive one. But no, he would do research, ensuring the quality, checking the price at different stores, reading customer reviews to find the best deal that has the features he needs and something that lasts long so he doesn't have to spend on another one. Second, change your mindset. With just one click away, spending money today is very easy and accessible to instant gratification. However, you need to end the cycle of indulging yourself with items that cost a lot of money. Now some of us were directed from a young age that we can soothe these pleasures with rewards which are materialistic things. As we get older, we retain that thinking and seek happiness in buying things. This is how people overspend. So what you need to do is to find alternate sources of pleasure. Now don't get me wrong, being frugal doesn't mean never spending money. It just means you spend money on the right things which are the ones that will truly fulfill you. Third, be frugal with food. One of the best ways to be frugal is to cut your food expenditures because it's one of the biggest lists of items to buy, especially when you often eat out or get food delivery. Frugal people rarely eat out. Instead, they cook their meals at home. Analyze your food spending. If you're too busy to cook every single day, then you try meal prepping. Set one day of the week to prepare all your meals for about 5-7 to seven days. Utilize your time efficiently. So there's no excuse not to switch from fast food to low budget but a lot healthier option. When it comes to food, there are a lot of tips on the internet whether it's for your snacks, meals, or even coffee. It's a bare fact that you can save money by making your coffee at home. According to Business Insider, if you're spending between $5 to $25 a week, that's between $20 to $100 a month, and that's $240 to $1,200 a year. That's a big chunk of money for just a drink compared to someone who brews at home, which costs 16 to 18 cents. That's a big difference. So obviously, making your own is an opportunity to save more money. Fourth, don't be wasteful. Avoid buying things more than you need and won't be able to use them later on. Cheap people often hoard a lot of stuff. Having a pack rat mentality would also affect your financial decisions. You should know how to let go of the things that are not used and has little value. 
and avoid buying items that can't be used in the long run. Usually, frugal people's homes don't have a lot of stuff. Some consider themselves as minimalists. Now let's take this for example. Mike. Since his main goal is to retire early, he puts high value on investing. He knows that if he doesn't watch what he spends on other things, he won't have enough money to invest and it delay his goal of early retirement. So what did he do? He cut back on other things to save more. He buys good quality clothes so that it would last longer. And he doesn't buy too much, just enough for his daily needs. He also finds ways to save on household expenses like saving money in groceries. Instead of buying sachets, he buys large ones which in the long run saves more money. He also uses appliances with inverters so that he can reduce his electric bill. He shops quality over quantity so there's no need to buy often because it lasts longer. As you can see, he spends his money carefully and intentionally based on his priorities and values. That is Mike's frugal lifestyle but it's going to look different from someone else's because everyone has different values. After all, that's yours and it needs to be catered to your own life. And lastly, avoid lifestyle inflation. When you have extra money, what's the first thing that pops into your mind? Is it put it in your savings account, add it to your emergency fund or invest it? Well, that's great for you. You're on the right track. On the other hand, for those who think of something they could buy like luxurious goods, car accessories, or the latest gadget, etc., chances are you might be rolling on a downhill called lifestyle inflation. It's really common. It is what they say the more you earn, the more you spend. That's the reason why people are living paycheck to paycheck. What you should be doing instead is make it the other way around. Maintain your lifestyle while inflating your savings. Now you can do the 10% rule wherein you take 10% from your income and save it or invest it. And the rest, that's what you use for your daily life. If your budget doesn't fit, then remove the unnecessary things. Never get money from that 10%. This is what we call paying yourself first before paying anyone else. But of course, there are times that you need to spend because of unexpected events that are costly and stressful like people who lose their job or medical and dental emergencies. What you need to do is to generate an emergency fund of at least 6 months of your expenses to be properly prepared for these kinds of things. This is important because once you prepared for the rainy days, you can now concentrate more on investing money without worrying about these unexpected events. So get into the habit of saving. The more you practice how to be frugal, the easier it becomes. The money-saving chores would be your second nature and your relationship with money will change. The more you make it a habit, the more it will engrave in your daily life and will help you achieve your financial goals. As Darren Hardy says, small seemingly insignificant steps completed consistently over time will create a radical difference. So never underestimate these simple things as they will compound over time and would really help you achieve your financial goals. But remember, just saving money won't make you rich. Learning to grow your money is a must which is the next step for you to make a difference. Find an investment vehicle that works for you. Now I have a video about my plan to retire early in the Philippines so if you want to find out my strategy and what I use, then do watch it. With that, I hope you've learned something and if you did, I'd appreciate it if you smashed the like button. So if you're new to the channel and would want to learn more about stock market investing, then you can look at my other videos. I talk about dividend investing and I also upload a video update of my portfolio every end of the month. Now if you're already investing in the stock market and would want a platform that can help you track your stocks and portfolio, then sign up to my link down below of Simply Wall Street to get your 14-day free trial and a 30% discount if you avail of their subscription using my link. So with that, Thank you and see you in the next video.